Hello and welcome to episode 11 of this 32 part series where I explain every county on the island of Ireland. This time it's County Fermanagh. Fermanagh is located in the north of the island of Ireland in the province of Ulster. Politically it is one of six counties that make up Northern Ireland which is a part of the United Kingdom. Fermanagh borders the counties of Donegal, Leitrim, Cavan, Monaghan and Tyrone. It is the only county in Northern Ireland that does not touch Loch Ney, and the only to border only one other Northern Irish county, that being Tyrone. The county is 1,851 square kilometres in area, making it the 25th largest county on the island, larger than neighbouring Leitrim and smaller than Kildare. Fermanagh is home to around 62,000 people, making it the 29th most populous, behind Monaghan and only ahead of Kylo, Longford and Leitrim. The name Fermanagh comes from the Irish Fire Monarch, which means the men or tribe of Manoch, a Gaelic chieftain whose descendants settled in what is now Fermanagh. Nicknames for Fermanagh include the Lakeland County due to the county being dominated by Loch Erne and other lakes, the Urn County due to the river and Loch Erne, as well as the McGuire County due to the land being historically ruled by the McGuire family. The county colours are green and white, and the marshal for the county is Fiorma Anach, which is Irish for the country of the lakes. Anthems for the county include Antil Honor and Anna from Fermanagh. Local newspapers include the Fermanagh Herald and the Impartial Reporter. Local radio stations include Q Radio Tyrone and Fermanagh. For the borders, let's start with the village of Belik, which is the westernmost in both Northern Ireland and the United Kingdom. The village is also divided between the Republic of Ireland and the UK by the River Iron. Moving north we find another divided village Peshigo with the border following the River Termin. Another divided settlement, though not internationally, is Irvinstown between Fermanagh and Tyrone. The Monaghan border isn't too interesting until we reach the international penny exclave of Dromoli on the northern side of the Finn River. The N54 road in Cavan crosses into Fermanagh becoming the A3. It becomes the N54 again as it passes through the exclave in Monaghan. It then goes back through Fermanagh becoming the A3 once again before going back into Monaghan as the N54. On the Cavan border we find yet another divided border village. Black Lion is in Cavan while Belcoo is in Fermanagh. Around a third of Fermanagh consists of lakes and waterways. The boundaries between the land and water is left in blood. Land feeds into a bog which goes into a lake. The county is centred around the basin of the River Urn which rises in neighbouring Cavan. It flows through the centre of Fermanagh, widening into two great lakes of Upper Loch Erne and Lower Loch Erne. Between the two parts of Loch Erne, the river narrows and it is here where the largest town in Fermanagh, Enniskillen, is located. Loch Erne has a large number of islands, the largest being Inishmore, Galoon and Boer Island. Many of these are drowned drumlin hills which were deposited by glaciers during the last glacial period. The low-lying topography of the county meant that the lake used to frequently flood, leading to the phase in the summer the urn is in Fermanagh, but in the winter Fermanagh is in the urn. They have become less common due to engineering works in the late 19th and mid 20th centuries. Other lakes in the county include the divided locks MacNean Upper and Lower around Belco and Blacklion, as well as the divided Loch Melvin with Leitrim. Most hills in the county are found around the periphery, such as the Schlieff Bay Range on the border with Monaghan, which is largely a blanket bog. To the southwest, we find the Kulka Range, where the highest point in the county Kulka is found. It's also the highest in Cavan, being located on the border and is also the source of the mighty River Shannon. Kulka is famous for the Stairway to Heaven Boardwalk Trail, which opened in 2015. Meandering through one of the largest expanses of Blanket Bog in Ulster, the 11 km route includes 450 steps. It was built by the Sheridan family to protect the ecologically sensitive habitat. I once started working the trail in the summer of 2020, but horrific weather conditions caused us to turn back. That same day was when I first tried Northern Irish Tay Shows. Honestly, I prefer the free Tay Shows. Culkin Lakeland's global geopark is shared between Fermanagh and Cavan. Set on sedimentary rocks such as limestones and shales, which formed in the warm shallow equatorial seas of the Carboniferous period over 300 million years ago. The county also has some Precambrian gneiss and Devonian sandstone. There's loads of interesting sites here, such as the Blacksley Waterfall and the Cliffs of Mago at Loch Levi Forest, the castles such as Money and Tully, and viewpoints such as those at Milebank and Gush Lugani. The most famous feature of the park and of County Fermanagh are the Marble Arch Caves, named after where the Clatter River emerges at the surface. At 11.5 km, they are the longest in Northern Ireland and a popular tourist attraction which even includes a boat ride. 
Just like caves in other karst regions in Ireland, they formed when slightly acidic washer eroded at the natural joints and bedding planes in the limestone rock. In the case of the Marble Arch Caves, this was done by three tributary rivers. The caves were first explored in 1895 by Edward Alfred Martel and Lister Jameson, but were only properly opened as a tourist attraction in 1985. Some other caves in the county include Whitefather's Cave and the caves of the Tully Brack and Belvoir Hills. Speaking of geology, the only quality diamond discovered in Ireland was found in the Colebrook River in 1816. Recent research has found minerals associated with diamondiferous kimberlite, so perhaps there may be a diamond mining industry in the future in Fermanagh. The county is noted for its bird life. Upper Loch Erne is home to 5% of the global population of Rupert swans, and Upper and Lower Loch Machneen are an important site for Greenland white fronted geese. In Ishvendra Island, where Kramastash and Upper Loch Erne is home to Ireland's largest heronry. The oak woods of Kramastash are important remnants of ancient Irish woodland rich in biodiversity, including the parasitic bird's nest orchid, pine marshes, rare butterflies such as the purple hair streak, and woodwash, and all of Ireland's native bat species. The two yew trees at the entrance to the Old Castle Gaijin are said to be some of the oldest in Europe. Speaking of yew trees, the original Irish yew tree came from the slopes of Kulka. A variant of the common yew, it was discovered in 1767 by farmer George Willis, who noticed its unique upright branches. One of the two originals survives in Florence Quiche Estate. The Irish yew is very common in graveyards around the world, and all are believed to be descendants from cuttings of the original two trees. Agriculture is mainly pastoral, composing of beef, dairy, sheep, pigs and some poultry. Farming even takes place on the islands of Loch Erne. Here farmers traditionally use special flat bottom boats called cots to transport cattle to and from the islands. The tradition of building cots has been revived in recent years by Loch Erne Heritage, with cot racing returning to the waters of Loch Erne. Fishing is also popular in the county's waterways, especially for eel. The village of Bleak has a long-standing tradition of making pottery. It was established after John Caldwell Bloomfield inherited the Castle Caldwell estate in 1849, and after a geological survey, discovered that there were materials needed to make pottery such as kaolin, flint, clay and shale were all present. The site next to the urn allowed the power of the river to be harnessed. With its distinctive style, it soon began exporting all over the world. While the pottery has faced problems such as due to coal supply during the world wars and changed hands multiple times over the decades, it continues to produce fine parry in China to this day, and is also a popular tourist attraction. Historically, the county has also had a lace making industry up until World War I, with 10 lace schools in the county. The county town of County Fermanagh is Enniskillen in the centre of the county, which is home to around 13,000 people. The town centre is located on an island in the River Erne. Other major settlements include Irvinstown, Lisnisky, Ballinamallard, Lisbeloy, Kesh, McGuire's Bridge, Newtown Butler, Belik, Derrylin, and Brookville. The county was administered by Fermanagh County Council until 1973 when it changed to these regions. Fermanagh District Council had mostly the same borders as the traditional county, besides it now controlled a small part of County Tyrone. Since 2015 it falls into the area of Fermanagh and Oma District Council. The county has also historically been split up into the baronies which you can see on this map. Enniskillen actually has an airport which was built as RAF St Angelo during World War II. As of 2023, there are no current passenger services. The road system of the county radiates around Dennis Gillen towards Belfast, Dublin, Sligo, Ballyshannon and Dorma. There are no motorways or even dual carriageways within the county, though there have been proposals to upgrade the A4 in both directions towards Belfast and Sligo. Enniskillen doesn't have a bypass, but one is planned to be built to the south of the town. Vermana is one of the few counties to not have any railway lines. In the past, lines connected Enniskillen to Derry, Dundalk, Bundoran and Sligo, but sadly these closed in the mid-20th century. The Into the West group supports bringing railways back to the northwest of Ireland, so hopefully someday Fermanagh will see trains once again. The Urn has long been used for transport, with the Ulster Canal connecting the Urn to Loch Ney and the Shannon Urn Washaway connecting it to the Shannon. Some places of interest within County Fermanagh include the Marble Arch Caves, Enniskillen Castle and Museums, Kolka Boardwalk, Boshyard Distillery, Florence Corish, Castle Cool, Headhunters Bible Shop and Railway Museum, Belik Pottery and Visitor Centre, Bushel Market Craft Centre Enniskillen, Farmer Stage, Castle Archdale and Devonish Island. Now a brief history. Evidence of human activity dates back 8,000 years. Signs of Neolithic settlement are dotted around the county, such as Drumskinny Stone Circle. Another ancient site are the carved figures in Caldra Graveyard on Boer Island. 
The two-headed figure reminds many of the Roman god Janus, but it is believed to be a Celtic deity, possibly the goddess Bauba who Boa Island is named after. The smaller neighbouring Losty Moir Island figure was moved to Boa in 1939. I couldn't find an agreed upon date when these were carved. Some sources say early Christian era, some say Iron Age. The arrival of Christianity brought the construction of monasteries such as that on Devonish Island on Lower Loch Ur near Enniskillen, which was founded by St Malays in the 6th century. On the island today, you can find a 12th century 25 metre high round tower and a distinctive large carved stone cross from the 15th century. Other interesting Christian stone figures can be found in White Island. The eight statues are carved in quartzite and date from around 800 to 1000 AD. After centuries of fighting between Gaelic clans, the Maguire family gained control over Fermanagh in the 14th century, based at Lisnaski. After an initial Anglo-Norman invasion, English rule declined throughout the Middle Ages, until English and Scottish settlers moved here during the plantation of Ulster in the 17th century. Wealthy landlords proceeded to build large estates such as Castle Cool and Florence Court, which was home to the Cole family who were Earls of Enniskillen. After the plantation, there was still a big religious divide between the poor Catholic Irish and the wealthy Protestant British settlers. After a bloody war of independence, in 1922 Ireland was granted independence from the United Kingdom. This new free state only consisted of 26 of the 32 counties. The other six would remain in the UK as Northern Ireland, including Fermanagh. In the decades after the partition of Ireland, tensions continued to build up between the Unionists and discriminated nationalists in Northern Ireland, and what started as a civil rights movement eventually erupted into a period of sectarianism, known as the Troubles. This 30 years of conflict saw many atrocities committed by both sides across Fermanagh, Northern Ireland and beyond. One of the worst attacks took place in Enniskillen on the 8th of November 1987. A provisional IRA bomb exploded near the town's war memorial during a Remembrance Day ceremony, killing 11 people. Violence eased by the early 1990s, and in 1998 the Good Friday Agreement was signed in Belfast, starting the road to peace in Northern Ireland. In June 2013, the 39th G8 Summit was held in the Loch Erne Resort, the first ever to take place in Northern Ireland. Vermanagh is one of the four counties in Northern Ireland which have a Catholic majority at 59.2% as of 2011. In the same census, 37% said they had a British national identity, 36% had an Irish identity, and 29.5% had a Northern Irish identity. Fermanagh GA plays their home games at Brewster Park in Enniskillen. While hurling camogie and ladies football are all present, Gaelic football is by far the most popular sport even though the men's county team has never won an Ulster final or an Northern Ireland final. They have reached the Ulster final six times and Northern Ireland semi-final in 2004, where after a replay they were beaten by Mayo. The main soccer team is Ballinamalaid United, which plays in the NAFL Championship and is based at Fernie Park. Some famous people from or associated with the county include Adrian Dunbar, former First Minister Eileen Foster, Father Brian Dicey, Charles Lawson, Roy Carroll, Kyle Lafferty, Brendan Dolan and Olympic gold medalist for Canada, Robert Kerr. Both Oscar Wilde and Samuel Beckett studied at the Poitoua Royal School in Enniskillen, while US President Bill Clinton has ancestry from the village of Ross Lee. First man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, has ancestors from Fermanagh, particularly from Lisnaski and Irvinstown. The Armstrong family moved to Fermanagh from Scotland during the plantation of Ulster. That's one small step, Fermanagh. Some of the most popular surnames in the county include McGuire, McManus, Johnston, Armstrong, Gallagher, Elliot, Murphy, Riley, Cassidy, Wilson and Corrigan. Due to the diaspora, traces of County Fermanagh can be found all over the world. For example, you can find Enniskill in Ontario and Fermanagh Township, Pennsylvania. Fermanagh is the urn, and the urn is Fermanagh. A land of lakes, caves and cots, Enniskill in and the urn. This is seriously one of Ireland's most underrated counties. For the next episode, we'll be heading for the first time to Connacht for County Galway. If you have any facts or information for the next episodes, please comment below or email countiesgw at gmail.com. Thanks to those who helped with information and subscribe for more videos about Ireland and the world. <laughs>